Just a few weeks ago, a tragic and incredible Holocaust story reached its culmination after 90 years. It was November 1942 when the SS liquidated the Jewish ghetto in Izbice, Poland. They brought the 4,000 Jews of the ghetto and lined them up at the edge of a pit that was prepared earlier. They were all shot dead. Among them was a mother, Miriam Greener, and her two daughters. Her husband, Mendel, was murdered some time earlier. Her oldest son, Chaim, escaped to Russia. He survived the Holocaust and he moved to Israel. Her youngest son, Yaakov Tzvi, escaped in the middle of the night, hiding in barns and wood piles. He tried to avoid the Gestapo, hunting down every last Jew to exterminate them. He made it to the city where they came from, Zamosk, but he realized there was no way he's going to survive until somebody gave him certificates of baptism, proving he was not a Jewish child, but a Christian child. His new name is Gregory Pavlovsky. The Gestapo arrested him, interrogated him, but he ultimately went free because of these certificates. But he was always on the run, trying to save his life until two Catholic nuns took him into an orphanage. He began studying. He had a brilliant mind. They put him into grade two. In two weeks, he was in grade three. By the summer, he was in grade four. He excelled in his Christian studies at the age of 13. At the time, he should have celebrated his bar mitzvah with his father and mother, Mendel and Miriam Greener, with his brother Chaim and his sisters, with his friends and family and relatives. Instead, he was officially baptized. Some years later, he graduated and he became a priest in the Lublin region. In 1966, Gregory Pavlovsky writes an article sharing the incredible story of his life. Somehow the article ends up in Israel. It falls into the hands of Chaim Greener, who's living in Haifa. He reads the article and he says, My brother, Yaakov Tzvi, is alive. They make contact. Yaakov Tzvi decides he wants to move to Israel. He wants to make Aliyah. But before he does that, he has one place to visit. He goes to Izbitsa, Poland. He erects a respectful monument on the mass grave where his mother and two sisters were murdered in 1942. But he does something else. He purchases a burial plot for himself right near the mass grave. He even prepares a headstone with the words to be engraved in Polish and Hebrew. And this is what he wrote. Father Gregor Palowski, Yaakov Tzvi Griner, son of Mendel and Miriam of blessed memory. I abandoned my family in order to save my life at the time of the Shoah. They came to take us for extermination. My life I have saved and have consecrated it to the service of God and humanity. I have returned to this place where they were murdered for the sanctification of God's name. May their souls be set in eternal life. Sometime later, Gregor makes Aliyah to Israel, who welcomes him at the airport, his brother Chaim. Yaakov Tzvi goes to Olpan. He masters Hebrew. He becomes a bishop in Jaffa. Some years later, a rabbi from Ashdod, Rabbi Shalom Alul, is visiting Izbitsa in Poland. He sees the monument over the mass grave and he sees this strange tombstone right nearby. He befriends the priest in Israel, the bishop in Israel. Puts up a mezuzah on the front door of his home. Gregory recites the blessing on the mezuzah all by himself in perfect Hebrew. Remember, here is somebody who grew up in a religious home in Poland, went to yeshiva till the age of nine. And when the rabbi asks him, how do you prefer to be called? The Catholic bishop says, call me Herschelah. Here is a priest who does not eat chametz on Pesach, who fasts on Yom Kippur, and who identifies publicly with the people of Israel. Somebody once asked him, Father Palowski, why do you share this story so frequently? Why do you identify so much with the Jewish people? Why did you make Aliyah to Israel? Why do you have to be buried right near the Jewish mass grave? You're a Christian today. And this was his answer. 
I do not want to live a lie. I do not want to deny my roots, my mother, my father, my people. I need to be truthful. I have a homeland, and that's Poland. I belong to the Polish people, but I have a nation that comes first. It's the Jewish people. I was circumcised on the eighth day, and I belong to the Jewish people. Yes, I can't speak against the Poles because they saved my life, but how can I speak against the Jews when I am one of them? I was born a Jew, he said. I lived as a Christian, but I will die as a Jew. He also requested from the rabbi that when he passes away, he should be given a full, perfect Jewish burial. Four weeks ago, Yaakov Tzvi Griner returned his soul to its maker at the age of 91. Based on his request, Rabbi Shalom Malul from Ashdod and his students flew to Poland. They buried Yaakov Tzvi Griner in the burial plot right near the mass grave where his mother Miriam and his two sisters were murdered in 1942. They gave him a perfect Jewish burial. The rabbi told Yaakov Tzvi, at last, you have returned to your people, to your parents, to the Jewish people. נולדת יהודי, חיית כנוצרי, והיום אתה חוזר לעם היהודי. וימליך קודשה בריחו במלכותי, ויקרא בחיי חונו ובמחיינו, ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בעגלה בזמן קרי ויבוא אמן. אמן! 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 the complexity of a soul, the painful journeys of so many souls, transported, fragmented, dichotomized between different worlds, different realities, different states of consciousness. But to me, it also demonstrates that eternal truth our great spiritual masters have taught us, that the infinite divine spark burns in every Jewish heart. Never underestimate the nuclear, infinite divinity within every single Jewish soul. If this is true about Gregory Pavlovsky, is it not true about your son and your daughter, about your student and your disciple, and about every single Jew you encounter? Happy Hanukkah.